let me just grab tick tock tick tock diggy 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 you don't stop tick tock all right let's go live live wired yeah i made my tick tock video that i just released and my first three lines were uh, my first line was how project-based learning will change your child's life and we'll see how that does but those usually don't do as well as when my first line is like um why doesn't public school teach in context right and it's like people in our society are so much more interested in destruction, tearing down, than building up. And, and that's because they've been trained to lose. So like you get so many people in society who like, they think they're making a difference and like, they're like, yeah, I'm out there owning the libs, you know? And it's like, why don't you do something productive? Productive, instead of caring about the libs, why don't you build something that actually could make a different, like build systems outside of them. And, but that's a big problem within our society. We've been pacified. So people are more interested in the stuff I do that tears people down. But that's like the least interesting thing about what I do. Now, what should we call this? What should we call this? We'll call it project based learning. We'll see how that goes. Project based learning go live three two one good morning tiktok you are here with youtube it is a beautiful day here in the sunny sunny south the birds are chirping and my god do they sing beautiful songs one of my favorite activities is to come out here in the morning holding my 12 month old baby girl and just listening to the birds sing. She loves to point them out. She loves to watch them. And life is so beautiful. So don't ever let anybody tell you that that is not the case. Hey, Brett, your work is awesome. Do what you do and preach, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about project-based learning and a project that you can do with your children this summer and they will absolutely thrive. This is part of our uh, No 317. What's up, brother? This is absolutely part of our year-long nature unit study. But even if you're not doing it, I'm going to lay everything out today. You can do it on your own without, you know, joining my group. So that's a good thing. So today I posted a video about project-based learning. And this is part of what we're doing with the unit study. And what I want the children to do is to take a mason jar, fill it with paper towels, spray them with a, a watering spray, get it moist. And then what you do is you have them put beanstalk seeds into the mason jar. And you have to make sure that the seeds are actually on the side of the jar so that you could see them. And then what you do is you wait and over... The next seven days, you'll start to see changes or your children will start to see changes and they will actually be able to observe the life cycle of a plant, right? So you take a mason jar, you take paper towels, you get them a little wet, you put the paper towels in the mason jar. You then take bean seeds, put them on the right up against the glass in the mason jar and your children will be able to observe the germination process. They'll be able to observe what happens under the soil. They'll be able to observe when the root comes out of the seed. They'll be able to observe that a root grows down. And there's cool videos you could watch. I have as part of the nature unit study, but if you just type in Sci Show Kids plus Plant Life Cycle, there's a great video on how no matter which way you plant a seed, the, the roots always know to go down. So like you could take the seed and have it upside down. When the root comes out, the roots will still go down because seeds are intelligent. Seeds are really um, nature at its finest. It's, it's the, the true beauty of God's work, how there is such abundance in this world, how you can literally go to the store, 
um, buy a mango, eat the mango, take the seed and plant it, and then you have a tree. And I, I speak from experience, I have about five mango trees over there, right? Um, just popped in to spread some love and tell you today is yours. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for that, Big John. I really appreciate that. You know, so much of the internet culture is people spewing their negativity, and we need more people like Big John. Like, you know, when you put negativity into the world, that negativity comes full circle. So, um, but yeah, so you want to teach your children about the life cycle of a plant, and you want to have them observe it. So by putting the seed in the mason jar, they could actually observe the germination. They could observe that no matter which way the seed is pointing, the roots will go down. They could observe that when the sprout comes out and they'll see that the sprout, just like the roots, always knows to go up, right? And they could observe when the plant first gets leaves and the entire process of a plant life cycle. And then of course, with that, you're studying photosynthesis, you're studying soil biology, but here's where the project-based learning really goes to the next level. And here's where you really start to make a difference in the life of your children. Because learning that stuff is important, right? We want them to understand the life cycle of a plant and that will help them be better gardeners. Hey, Feral Patriot, that will help them be better gardeners and that will help them be um, more independent, right? They'll know where their food comes from, how to grow their food, the difference between organic and genetically modified. We want our children to know all of this stuff, right? I wrote the book, You Are What You Eat. Um, but we also want them to develop skills because it only takes one skill to free a man. And we saw this in the last two years. We saw this. How many people do you know? Best place to get seeds? Um local nurseries. I can ask my wife if she's in here. Nicole, where do you order the seeds from? My wife does our seed ordering. Um, but yeah, if you go to a local nursery, just make sure that it's organic and not genetically modified is the most important thing. I just got that book in and I love it. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, so this is, this is where you make a really big difference in your child's life. You want to teach them skills. And we all know people in the last two years um, M A I Gardner, hardware bear who knows a lot about this stuff is saying M I A, I'm sorry, M A I Gardner, Baker Creek seeds. Oh, Michigan Gardner, M I Gardner. So the M I Gardner, so Michigan Gardner, Baker Creek seeds. Um, or like I said, just any nursery, don't get them at like home Depot and, and Walmart and whatnot. Like those aren't the best seeds. Um, but if you go to local nurseries, they have um, organic, non-genetically modified seeds, and you'll be, you'll be straight. You'll be good. So we all know people in the last two years who they wanted to quit their job because they were uncomfortable with maybe a certain procedure being pushed on them or a policy from a company, and they found out or they didn't feel like they could do that because they were so nervous. Hey, I got to pay my mortgage. I have to feed my children. I have to put clothing on them. You know, and I can't quit this job. And the reason people feel that way is because they feel like they don't have skills because it only takes one skill to free a man. If they had skills in which they could fall back on and still earn a living, they'd be in a much better position. So one of the things we do in Homeschools Connected, one of the things we do with our nature unit study and what I'm going to tell you how to do right here is we embed skill development into everything we do. So yes, we want our children to understand the life cycle of a plant. We want them to observe in that Mason jar, right? For those of you that missed it, you take a Mason jar, put wet paper towels in it, put bean seeds in the jar, and then your children could actually visualize the entire life cycle of a plant, the roots, the sprout, the leaves, all of it. So what we do then is we, through project-based learning, is we challenge our children to document the life cycle of the plant. So every morning they walk downstairs and the first thing they do is they check their mason jar. Did anything happen? The first day, no, nothing happened. They don't have to document that. The second day, nothing happened. Well, I get to the seventh day and now all of a sudden a little root came out of the seed. So what I would have my child do is take out 
the phone, give them your phone, and have them make a 10 minute, a 10 second video recording of the route or pictures. But I, I like the videos for purpose of this assignment. So they check every day and anytime there's a change in the plant, if the root grew, like the root was small, the next day it grew bigger, 10 second video. The next day it grew bigger, 10 second video. Eventually the little sprout comes out of the root, 10 second video. Eventually the sprout pops up above the paper towels and it's, you know, it's on its own now. It's standing like a, like a sprout pops out of the dirt, 10 second video. The plant grows its first leaf, 10 second video. And once the plant goes through its entire life cycle, they have all these 10 second videos. You then show them Adobe Premiere Rush or iMovie or any editing software. You have them put their videos, compile their videos into the editing software and you show them how to do the video editing. This is how you cut the video, right? So like how long do you want this scene to be? And then they can make a little video which shows a documentary, the entire life cycle of that plant from seed to root to roots growing down to sprout to sprouts going up to leaves, right? They can make a little documentary showing the life cycle of that plant and then challenge them to depict it all in under one minute. Then once they do that, you have them challenge them to do a narration explaining the life cycle of a plant in under one minute for the video. Have them write out a script. They write out their script. You go over the grammar with them. Oh my Lord. That was um, what we call an assassin bug. Its name is an assassin bug, and it was rolling up on me. And um, you could imagine from its name what an assassin bug could do to you. In fact, its sting is much more painful than um, a wasp sting. Much more. Sorry, buddy. I didn't want to have to do that, but you are too dangerous for me to play games with. Sorry, I'm going to throw this guy. Man, these assassin bugs have been everywhere. Gotta roll up on me like that. Yeah, it was just rolling up. It was walking right up to me. I was like, oh, Lord. All right. Welcome to the South. Assassin bugs give me eebie jeebies, man. All right. So, back to what was I talking about? Okay, yeah. So you have them write out a tis the season of assassin bugs. So you have them write out a script and get their narration ready um, to overlay over their documentary. That's where you teach them proper English. You sit down with them. You go over the grammar like, hey, there should be a comma here. This should be capitalized, um, blah, blah, blah. Like go over the grammar of what they're working on, right? And... So by doing this, you're teaching them all different things. Like you're incorporating English and grammar into what they're doing. You're incorporating organization and planning. Then you have them narrate their script, right? So you have them read their script and narrate it or perform it. You know, they don't have to read it. They can memorize it, whatever. Um, they could paraphrase it, you know, let them be creative. It's fine. Like it's fine for children to be creative. Is that better? Oh, that's much better. It's fine for children to be creative. Um, so you have them narrate the script. Um, you, they overlay it with the video. And then you have them do a presentation of their documentary. And they can, you can do so much with it from there. They can uh, make invitations and invite grandma and grandpa over and the family over. And they could, you know, have a presentation of their, their plant life cycle. Um, since their face isn't in it and they're just narrating, you know, a one minute video, they can even post it onto the internet, right? Like there's so many cool things they can do with it. And they're developing not only the skills of understanding the plant life cycle and growing food, but they're actually developing the skills of videography. And videography is a great skill. And I talk to parents about this a lot 
because the future is short form video. And that's why I like children to practice short form videos. One, it's not too comprehensive where it's like they're making a 20 minute documentary, right? So it's reasonable for their age range and they're developing a skill that could really benefit them in life. And then if they like that skill, you can do so many unschooling things where you're like, oh, you like this skill? All right, why don't we take a course in videography? And you could sign them up for a course in videography because they liked that project, right? Then you start to teach them really cool video things where they could do special effects and all that. And then you let them do unschooling. So like whatever they're passionate about, whether that be the Power Rangers, the Powerpuff Girls, or whatever children watch these days, right? You can have them make all of these videos about whatever it is they're passionate about. Like if your child likes hockey, like if you have a child passionate about hockey, are you chasing, girl? We are in the South. If you have a, a child passionate about hockey, you can have them... Um, make tutorials on how to do hockey tricks or hockey moves or hockey training tutorials, right? But you're developing that skill as a videographer. And of course you could develop so many skills with that organization, planning, narration, public speaking. You could have them take courses in public speaking. So you do project-based learning and then you have them do unschooling off of that project-based learning. And that's what we're doing. I gave you this week's assignment but that's what we're doing all year with our nature unit study um, where our children are composting, making fertilizer, um, building garden boxes, learning the skills of carpentry, possibly selling the stuff that they make like ladybug feeders on sites like Etsy, um, making little greenhouses, growing their own plants, harvesting their crops, learning geography, um, how to calculate northeast, south, and west. All of this we're doing through project-based learning. And then what I try to communicate to the community is if your child takes to any one aspect of it, start doing unschooling off of that one aspect. So if your child likes carpentry, get them $10 books on Amazon and have them do one carpentry project a month or um, have them take a course in videography and let them learn the skill of videography. So I'm gonna go back and read through your comments, your questions now. And um, if you have any questions or, you know, whatever, just let me know. I'm not going to stream for too long today because we had a morning. We had a morning and um, I still have a lot of stuff I have to get done today. So we got your books, just found your live. Welcome. It's a great time. Feral Patriot, such a legend. The pandemic taught us we can live with a lot less. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this stuff, I think all this stuff is a blessing. Like, it's, oh, sorry about that. Phone. Sorry, YouTube. You're back. Back in the New York groove. Yeah, the pandemic was a gift. I mean, it, it showed people that they can't be relying on the system, they can't be relying on a corporate boss to live within your means, to don't try to keep up with the Joneses because it can put you in a bad situation where the system has financial leverage over you. Now with the whole food situation, people are like, oh, you know what, I better start learning how to grow my food. And like, that can be such a blessing. Like, even just getting into growing your food, if nothing happens, when you start to grow your food, you'll start to look at even organic food in the grocery store the same way you might look at McDonald's now. Because you'll, you'll realize like, oh, it says organic, but they're actually allowed to put all of these chemicals and pesticides on organic. There's just an acceptable level, right? So you're like, wait a second. It's not even what it says it is, right? So you'll start to become like, as I've grown food, I've become more and more of a food snob. To the point where now, like, we go to the grocery store because I, I still don't grow nearly enough food. Like, but we will over the next three to five years get to close to 100%. But, like, I go to the grocery store and, like, I'm a food snob about things. And it's not because, oh, you're – no, because, like, I understand where food comes from now. Like, I understand what processed food is. I understand what genetically modified food is. I understand what um, – 
you know, the problem with Roundup is, you know? So when you do that, you like, even when you go to the grocery store. So when you start to, when you, if you start growing your food now, cause you're worried about a shortage. And then even if that shortage never comes, what a blessing because you'll become a healthier person. And if you become a healthier person, you might actually live a longer life, potentially much longer if you eat healthier, right? So all of these things are blessings. And that's why we teach this stuff to our children at a young age. That's why I chose the first thing I ever started putting together for Homeschools Connected was our year-long nature unit study, where our children are learning where food comes from, what organic is, what genetically modified is, what, um, where, what soil biology is, why fungus and bacteria isn't bad, right? Why that's why, why cow poop and chicken poop and alpaca poop is a great thing, right? It's not disgusting. It's where your food comes from. The, the integral role that worms play in the healthy uh, biodiversity of soil, how certain bugs are great for your garden, right? You need those bees. You need those ladybugs. Where that honey comes from, how to um, make candles out of beeswax and what a beautiful natural resource bees are. In fact, I'll be a bee farmer over the next 12 months. Me, my wife and I are getting bees. We're getting bees and chickens over the next 12 months and... Over the next 24 to 36 months, we, are, we have the goal of also adding goats and cows and alpaca. Oh, I want alpaca. Even if I could keep up from overspraying on my crops, it's still getting into my water. Sorry to hear that, hardwood bear. You know what I realized this weekend? I can't even grow organic. I live rural surrounded by cornfields using, yeah, Roundup. Yeah, well, you know what? You, you do the best you can, right? So make adjustments, adjust, readjust, find ways to keep it out. And if some of it leaches in, well, that's the environment we live in. But overall, you're still eating much healthier. And you know you're not directly putting stuff on your crop. So, you know, I, I have the same problem in a rural, rural area. Like I know a lot of those corn farmers spray Roundup, you know, and I'll find a way. I'm going to build a wall. <laughs> But I don't know if my neighbors are going to pay for it. Hello, Nina. I've never thought to go that deep, interesting assignment. Got to do it now. Yeah, listen. With project-based learning, which you absolutely should be the dominant form of learning for your children. Well, I mean, and listen, there could be unschooling, but even within unschooling, then you're giving them projects based around the stuff they want to learn about, right? With project-based learning, you always want to think like, what do I want them to learn? Which is always skills. The school system is wrong. I can't preface this enough. I would rather my child know carpentry and engineering than nonsense scientific theory and politically driven history. Like, what would you rather them learn? If I had to choose, they're going to be carpenters, right? Like, skills free people. It is skills that free people and critical thinking faculties, right? So, with anything you're doing, you always want to think, like, what direction do I want to take this? How do I develop skills in my children? And then how can we level up? So, like, you're doing one thing, like, I don't know, you're doing the beanstalk project, but then you're teaching them how to f film a little documentary and they like filming the documentary. Then you're teaching them like advanced videography skills by having them take a course in it. Right. And then once they know those advanced skills, now they're making, you know, they like hockey. You're having them make hockey tutorials, how to do training videos, you know, which I, I had a child doing. Um, so you, you can just level up, level up, level up. And then as they level up, then you start to get them real world experience. So like, okay, now you're making these hockey training videos. Um, how do you start to do entrepreneurial things? Like, can you build a website? Um, hockey, hockey training, um, 101.com, right? Hockey training for kids, 101.com or free training for kids.com. And then you post all your training videos. So like, 
and you start to show them how to market it. Like, how do you make an Instagram and start to target that demographic? And then from there, like, okay, so now people go to your website. How can you monetize that? So then you say, okay, well, um, and again, there's a million directions you can go with that, but there's sites like Printful and Printify with bumper stickers. Can you design a cool hockey based bumper sticker and then sell that bumper sticker on your website when people go to your website, right? Like you just want to teach skill after skill and level up, level up, level up. And if you keep doing these things over time, your children will be very capable and you won't have to be like, you can do this, you can do that. They'll just be like, oh, I know what I can do. By the way, for anyone interested in what we do, and it is way, the value of it is way, it's worth much more than it actually costs. Um, Homeschools Connected at www.classicallearner.com and it's $10 a month with the promotion code um, FREEDOM. Will you make a short TikTok about your ideas so I can save it and share such a cool idea? I literally, the topic of this conversation I made a TikTok about today, right before I went live, I posted it. That's what my TikTok was about today. So we'll see how that does. Um, you never know, but, and all my videos, my Cubs to Bears channel is pretty much exclusively lesson plans and assignments that you can do with your children. My classicallearner.com channel, I mix it up. I mix in the gravy and some other stuff. My at Real Brett Pike channel um, is just me going off about whatever I want to go off about, which I enjoy. And uh, my Homestead EDU channel is just me posting some homesteading videos I do. But I, I'm not too active on that, but like when I can, I make cool homesteading videos for that. And my Classical Learner channel, my original channel, was hit with the nuclear bomb of silencing. But it's all good. I got nothing but love for you, TikTok. It's all good. I never seem to catch much of your lives starting homeschooling, but a little lost. You're in the right place, and I'm here every day at 9.30 a.m., um, except on Fridays, and sometimes I'm not on Thursdays, because I teach a live class on Thursdays um, on the Bill of Rights and the American Revolution for the members of Homeschooled Connected. So sometimes on Thursdays, I'm so busy getting ready for class that I don't stream, but if I feel like I'm efficiently ready for class, um, then I still do a Thursday stream. Another plant burned yesterday? Oh. Oh, you're talking about those type of plants. Yeah, we all know what it is. We all know what it is. I, I'm not going to get too into it because I'm guessing that de that delves into the area that uh, gets me nuked, but we all know what it is. Like, grow your food. I don't even care about the problems. Like, yeah, we, we obviously know Bill Gates wants to sell you his butt meat. Like, right? His genetically modified butt meat. Like, we're all aware of that, but, you know, and from what I've seen, the guy is very crafty in his marketing strategy to get his products out. I mean, that guy is willing to go above and beyond to make sure that you want his products. Or even if you don't want them, you feel compelled, dare I say. <laughs> that is a great skit. I mean, they would never allow it on social media, but that is a great skit of someone like, they're so impressed with that guy's marketing schemes. <laughs> That is great. Someone should do that. When do you do that? I have to play it close to the vest, but when do you do that? We have issues finding mason jars. You can use um, a clear plastic container. It's fine. Anything clear, that's a closed environment, you can do. Use an old pickle jar. That's a great, great advice. Thank you for that. And that's why, like, I always tell people... Like the value of our homeschool community is we have hundreds of homeschool parents and homeschools connected with a combined thousands of years of homeschooling experience. And I don't always know the answer, but if you ask the community, the community usually knows the answer.
That's all right. Learn it now with your children. It's fine that you didn't learn it at school. Be ready for those goats. They are super destructive. Yeah, I think that's why the goat is the symbol of Satanism, right? It's not because goats are bad. Goats are beautiful animals. But their nature is destructive. And the nature of Satanism is destructive. So that's why the goat is um, representative of that symbolically. My husband dreams of putting a dome around the whole property as a greenhouse. Now that would be lit. That would be, that would be lettuce. I want to replace the term fire with lettuce. That would be lettuce. Do you have supports for children that are dyslexic? Yeah, go to um, the Center for, for the Center for Speech and Dyslexia, uh, and then also Memoria Press and the Gemini Homeschooling System. G E M I I N I, G E M I I N I Gemini Homeschooling. Um, all market that they have curriculum designed specifically for dyslexia. You know, and then for dyslexia, like, respect your child's learning style. Like, let them do reading material on things that they want to read about. Just set aside, like, 45 minutes. And then for, like, the science stuff, the history stuff that, like, might be a little bit more complex. Yeah, you can let them read along, but, like, let them listen through audiobooks. So let them learn from watching videos. Like, let your child learn how they learn. Don't, don't focus on, like... Oh my God, you have dyslexia. This defines you. Like, no, we're all different. We all learn in different ways, right? Like, I, I prefer to read my books through audiobooks. I love putting on headphones and listening to books as I do stuff. And like, everyone learns differently and it's fine. In fact, dyslexic children often wind up really good at pattern recognition. So like, I would do a lot of work with puzzles and stuff like that or like mysteries because... Pattern recognition is a really good skill and like a lot of dyslexic people are great at that. So appreciate your content. Thank you. Just graduated my fourth. I would so love, love to use your curriculum. Yeah, we love to have you here. So, and if you want to share any curriculum that you use, like that you made, like one of the things we have in our community is parents have the ability to share original curriculum that they make with the community we would love like if you want to donate any resources um it will go a long way to helping a lot of really good people so and it will help my business by the way which i really appreciate i do recommend you to others i really appreciate that people stop seeing obstacles your kids are watching you be the hero figure it out right you you want your children to see you always taking extreme personal responsibility Letting the kids see the obstacles and seeing us figure them out is very important. Important to develop problem-solving skills. His marketing skills are impeccable. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. I try to bring the heat, you know. I try to, I do. I always try to get better at marketing and sales because you can't drive a business if you don't have those two aspects. Like, I could have the best curriculum in the world, and we do have phenomenal curriculum that's unlike anything on the internet. Like, our nature unit study is designed to not only teach children about healthy living and where their food comes from and how to grow food, but like they're learning photography, they're learning videography, they're learning construction, they're getting entrepreneurial experience. You see me marketing and selling right now, but, but all seriousness, like I don't hide behind it. Like it's not a bad thing, right? I believe in what I do, right? I can have the best stuff in the world. I teach a course on propaganda, which the people in here who have had children take it will tell you there is nothing there is nothing available like it where I use the Cubs to Bears children book series to teach a course on propaganda in which I dress up like a cat. I dress up like a rooster, a news reporter. Like I put on this intricate course that teaches children 
how to identify propaganda, how social shame could be weaponized against them to get them to give up their rights, how truth speakers are labeled derogatory terms and that's used to silence them, right, in the spear of public conversation, how the news media will show you a partial truth, tack a lie onto it and build a narrative around that lie, right? Like, Teaching children how to identify propaganda, a skill that will benefit them their entire life. I teach a course on the Bill of Rights and the American Revolution in which we relentlessly go over the Bill of Rights and then we look back to the American Revolution. We look back to the American Revolution and we understand on a deep level why the Founding Fathers thought free speech was so important. Why they thought the right to a fair trial was so important. Why they thought the right to privacy was so important, right? So we are, I'm teaching a course on the media industrial complex in which children are actually taught how to track the money, right? So these courses are phenomenal. But if I'm not able to effectively communicate that to a wide range of people, right? And it doesn't matter how good your stuff is, if you can't reach people, only a certain percentage are going to join, right? So if I can't reach people marketing with what I'm doing, then it doesn't matter what I'm doing. And if I can't articulate what I'm doing in an effective way to sell it, well, then no one will sign up, right? So marketing and sales are very important skills, skills that I always try to get better at. And by the way, one of the things we do in Homeschools Connected is we relentlessly work with the children on their skills as marketers and as and on their skills as salespeople, right? These are skills that every child should work on. In fact, I don't like the guy, okay? But if you think you can't learn from the guy, you are you're lost, right? I don't like George Soros, but you could read you could you could learn a lot reading from George Soros. I don't like Warren Buffett, but if you wanted to know about stocks, you might want to read Warren Buffett, right? I don't so the guy I'm talking about is Mark Cuban. And I remember years ago, I was watching Mark Cuban and he talked about his childhood and he was talking about how he would always get jobs. He would choose his jobs based on if that job could teach him a skill. There is such a great lesson in that. He would only take a job if that job would train him how to do sales or he would only take a job if that job would train him how to do marketing because those skills would benefit him for the rest of his life. By the way, for anyone that doesn't like what I'm saying right now, all this is profound, right? And people don't talk about this stuff because people are liars and I'm not a liar. Yes, I come on here every day and I do marketing and I make my videos and I do marketing. And every day I try to sell people on Homeschools Connected, on Cubs to Bears books, but it's not a bad thing because I believe in Homeschools Connected. I believe in Cubs to Bears books. I've spent the last few years of my life building something I believe in from the grassroots level, right? Building it up, spending my night, staying up till three in the morning, right? I, I built it when I had a full-time job building this stuff up, right? I believe in this stuff with every fiber of my soul and I would never apologize for selling it and marketing it. And it's, it's really something in our society, the reason people have a negative connotation with salespeople is because salespeople are often trying to sell things that they don't believe in. They're selling things like they'll try to sell you food that is genetically modified, um, sprayed with Roundup and will make you sick. Yeah, that guy's a sleazeball, but the sales itself isn't sleazy. Sales is a good thing if you believe in what you're selling. And I certainly believe in what I sell. Even if I could, um, for those very reasons, I don't understand why you don't like most of the people you just named. Um, cause I, I think they sell things that they don't believe in. I think Warren Buffett is the largest sale holder, the largest shareholder in Coca-Cola in America, right? He is the largest shareholder in Coca-Cola in America probably in the world. I, I don't know exactly, but I don't think he's the CEO, but he, he's a large share, shareholder. He makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year from Coca-Cola, and we all know what Coca-Cola does to people. That ain't for me. That ain't me. That ain't me. I ain't no senator's son. Right? Um, Q 
Cuban, I think, I think that he takes political positions based on his ability to get favors from politicians. That ain't me. That ain't me. Like that's treacherous to me. That's treasonous. And if we lived in a more moral society based on truth and what's important in life, people like that would have a very hard time. And when the fall comes, they're going to have a very hard time. And what are you saying about Soros? I mean, maybe Soros, but the rest are just good businessmen. No, I, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. What are you selling? Don't sell me snake oil and expect me like, yeah, no doubt. Like Warren Buffett is a great businessman. Like Mark Cuban is a great businessman, but they are willing to sell things that will hurt people. Like when Mark Cuban came out, like when he came out and he backed Hillary Clinton, like Mark Cuban's not a stupid man. Okay. He backed Hillary Clinton because of dirty politics and what she would give him. And like, I don't mind him not backing the other guy. Like, I don't mind him not backing Trump. Like, if you think Trump's a bad guy, have at it. But you damn well know Hillary Clinton. Like, Mark Cuban's not your average brainwashed person on the street, right? I mean, this guy plays insider baseball, right? So, you know, when he like comes out and backs Hillary Clinton, I'm like, man, you're a sleazeball, man. You know what that is. I always get crazy looks when I say my plan to do self-learning homeschool and hesitate to say unschooling. Man, tell those people to get lost. They could they try to judge what they don't understand. What about the UK people, brother? Uh, I mean, we've been trying to help you Brits since 1776, but you guys just <laughs> You guys just can't help yourself, man. I'm trying to tell you about that right to bear arms, but you don't want to listen. Yeah, yeah, I help the UK people. I, uh, I mean, the assignment I went over today, like you could literally do that with your children, right? You could literally get the mason jar, get the paper towels, put the water in, on the paper towels, put the paper towels in the jar, put the seed in the jar, right? And then what, have your child watch the germination process, have them do the videography assignment, right? Use that to teach them videography. If they like the assignment, have them take courses in videography. If they get good at videography, let them make the coolest videos on planet Earth about whatever it is they're super passionate about. And then just show them how to do entrepreneurial stuff with that, right? Show them how to do business. Show them how to do marketing and sales, right? Like show them how to um, take that as a service and then turn it into a product. Whether that be shirts, right? Simple stuff, right? Nothing too crazy. Bumper stickers, um, you know, whatever it is that they're offering. I don't know, you know, but you can do all this with your children. And by the way, we'd love to have you in home schools connected. We'd love to have you, but you don't need to join my thing to like, all you have to do is hear what I'm saying and you can do it all. You know, you don't need me to do that. Bear Mini Mom, your course is amazing. Thank you. Bear Mini Mom is quite a legend. <laughs> Feral Patriot, I love your tag name. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite ones. I think that's that's lit. That's lettuce. That's lettuce. Oh, you're at yeah, my dog is smarter than the president. Yeah, I mean I don't like like I don't care. Like I think Joe Biden's kind of like low hanging fruit. Like the guy walks around drooling and pooping his pants with dementia and whatnot. Allegedly could it be, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm joking, joke. Ha ha ha. But, um, this was given to me as a present, a present. And I do enjoy it. It's true. I mean, put it this way. If my child were going to public school, which he's not, but if he was, and that guy was the bus driver, I'd feel bad, but I'd have to talk to the school and I'm not even talking about the sniffing stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'd feel bad, assuming he didn't do the sniffing stuff. I would have, I'd feel bad, but I'd talk to the school and I'd be like, listen, I don't think my child is safe with this guy driving the bus. He doesn't seem to know where he is all the time. He gets confused, right? I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm not in like to troll the guy. 
but I wouldn't feel comfortable with that man driving my child's school bus. And he's supposedly running the country. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, we all, they're all puppets, but it's like, this is like next level puppeteering going on here. The guy poops his pants. I don't have a dog, but mine is smarter as well. Bear Mini Mom, you missed it. An assassin bug tried to massacre me on the screen. Actually, I, I, I demonstrated the fear of a, a five-year-old girl. Um, but the, the assassin bug, look, bug looked me in the eyes and said it was going to kill me. And I thought it might be my, ma my last moment here. We have this weird thing where we are to feel bad to charge for our labor. At least I do. Yeah, because we're good people, but we shouldn't. And like, you know, like myself, I know what I do makes a difference in the world. Like, I don't like false humility, humility either. Like, I make a big difference in the world every day. Like, my videos alone make a difference in the world. So, I really don't feel bad. Like, I need to support my family. And the $10 a month I charge for what I do is well worth it. And, you know, quite frankly, like more people who like don't even have children should support what I do just because it's a good thing. Like support good people in the world or good people go away. Like if I hit a point where I didn't have enough members or enough people didn't buy my books, then I would have to quit all of this. I'd have to drop it. Not because like, Oh, so you're in it for the money. No. Like I literally have to support my family. Like I would have to go and get a job for someone, right? Like, I have to support my family and it's, it's life. That's like, you know, I, I wish I, if I came from like Rockefeller and I didn't need to make money to support my family. Sure. But like, I literally, I have to get clothing for my children. I have to buy, you know, they need food and shelter and clothing and you know, all the crap that they do, like, you know, and everything, by the way, everything in our society is getting so expensive right now. It's insane. It's insane. Like, I looked at Nicole and I was like, holy crap. Like, I just feel like every like time we do a little thing, it's so much money now because of the inflation. And it's like, it's really debilitating. I know I'm not the only one feeling that. Okay, I'm thinking here, I don't believe in six and a half pound pad as a product for carpet because it undermines carpet integrity? Would I be bad for selling someone who insists? I, I mean, I think there's levels to things. I think that objectively, Coca-Cola has done so much damage to people, like Coca-Cola and McDonald's, that if you're selling it, I, like, I think that's sleazy. And like, I know people have to work jobs. I'm not killing you, you're working a job. Harbor Bear, you want to go sell your fluffy carpets or whatever, have at it. Now, like, now if you were selling a carpet and you knew that that carpet causes um, a certain disease and you don't disclose that, yeah, I do think that's sleazy. I like you, man, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Yeah, I think that's sleazy. Now, do I think like if you do that, you're a terrible guy? Like, no, nah, I mean, I, I like you, Hardwood Bear, but. Um, I think there's levels to everything and I'm not perfect. Like let he who is without sin throw, cast the first stone. Like I'm not perfect in my life. And like, I know like people need to earn a living and you got to do all that, but like we should draw moral lines and we should call it what it is like, and like talk to God about it. if you're doing something like that, like talk to God about it and be like, really wrestle with it. Is it okay? And like, maybe it is okay. Like maybe that's acceptable, but you know, I'm going to call it out, so. You could definitely make arguments like that for carpet or LVP. Like, you know, I don't think it's doing what Buffett's doing, but. You know, that guy with all his money, right? Like, all the money and resources he has. Does he have to keep making money selling something that hurts people at this point? And the answer is obviously no. Like, all right, Harwood Bear, like, I get it. Like, you're selling LVP and you're trying to earn a living, right? Like, you're probably, like, middle class, right? Warren Buffett 
has billions and billions of dollars and he's still making billions of dollars selling poison. That guy's a sleazeball. And then he'll lecture people about, oh, you're hurting the planet. Oh, yeah, like what corporations do you support? I'm an actual environmentalist. I homestead. I plant trees. Basically every day I plant seeds, right? My, my son and I pick up plastic all the time to the point in which I always have to yell at him like, no, no, because he goes to grab things and I'm like, I don't know like what he's grabbing, you know? But like, I'm an actual environmentalist. But you'll get these virtue signaling billionaire sleazeballs who support these global corporations who um, run their operations in third world countries so they could skirt all the rules that get put in place in places like America only because they don't want competition, not because they actually care about the planet, right? So these people are complete sleaze balls, okay? I undersell myself often because of guilt. Well, when I'm through with all of you, I, I don't want you to undersell yourself. I want you to oversell yourself because believe in yourself. Your selling is not inherently bad if you believe in what you're selling. Right. Those, those guys are just, they're in it for money. Like Warren Buffett is making billions of dollars selling poison. Like, all right, at what point do you want to look at yourself and be like, Maybe I've made enough money and I should actually promote good things in the world. Does he think he's going to die with all his money? No, he probably thinks he's going to be a transhumanist and live forever. And that's the irony of all these billionaire atheists. They believe they're going to lose everything when they die. So they, they, they just never have enough. And they're, they're obsessed with prolonging their life because they're so afraid of what's to come. They live their life in this terrible fear of God. Like, I don't want to die, but I could die very comfortably tomorrow. I believe with every fiber of my being where I'm going. And I remember on my grandmother's deathbed, I remember looking into her eyes and she knew she was dying. And there was not an ounce of fear in her eyes. She was just happy because she knew where she was going. And these people don't have that. And all the money in the world can't buy that. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. The religion of science. I don't know if I want to talk about that now or tomorrow because we've had a good talk. I undersell my soap even knowing the amount of hours I put into research getting the kids occupied. Why would you undersell it? If you, if you know you're putting out a good product then that product is good for people. And people are buying soap anyway. So it's not even like you're getting them to spend more money than they would spend. You're literally getting them to spend money on a product that's good for them rather than getting them to spend money on a product that would damage them, soaps with chemicals, right? So you're literally making their lives better. Them giving you their money makes their lives better. And that's where you really get to a good place. That's why like, I so relentlessly and confidently sell my stuff. Like, you buy the right to bear arms, it will make your child's life better. You buy, um, you are what you eat, it will make your child's life better. You spend $10 a month on Homeschools Connected, it will make your child's life better. And yours, mind you, right? So, like, why would I ever feel bad about selling that? That's like, and if you're soap, if you're looking up the ingredients, and you're making a good product, and that means when they give you money, that means they're no longer putting toxic chemicals on their body and they're loving their body. Sell that to the moon. Sell that all day, every day. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's what a good society looks like. There's nothing wrong with taking care of your family. There's nothing wrong with earning a living. What should you do instead? Work for some soulless corporation that wants to pollute the world and then blame you for man, right? Like this nonsense world, nonsense world. Bear mini mama five. If anyone wants her soap, making soap and curing. Ah, feral Patriot makes soap as well. How do you briefly describe unschool to others? 
Unschooling is the idea that you follow the interest of your child and let them study subjects and topics that they want to study. And then within that natural motivation, so they're more motivated than the typical child because it's what they want to study, you could embed what you want them to learn within that. It's a much better philosophy than, than public school. I agree, nothing wrong with informing people as to why your product is the right choice for them. Yeah, I mean, that's, you should. I mean, how would they know? <laughs> how would they know? I, they will stand there and tell people all the things I did. Better salesman than I. I understand why I plan to. I hate when this jumps. I try to read it. And it just jumps. And then I lose my spot. I understand why I plan to and the concept, but I don't get into all, all of this when I'm explaining it. Yeah, I would just explain it like that. That you're following the interest of your child and using that to teach them what you want them to learn. And they'll be more motivated. Yeah, kids are better at sales. They are the best. Yeah, because they're so innocent. Cubs to Bears, ClassicalLearner.com. My mommy spent all day. Good morning. Is your class expensive? No, it's $10 a month with the discount code FREEDOM, and you get access to all my classes. Yeah, the assassin bug is no joke. That is very affordable. Thank you. I try to keep it that way. They are making it harder to survive and wondering why we are switching to homesteading. You homestead, homestead, homestead. Grow that food. Get out of debt, grow your food, and crush. When I found out I was pregnant with my 10-month-old, I stockpiled formula. Good decision. How do they expect moms to feed milk allergies with this shortage? Um, well, I mean, if you want a specific curriculum for dyslexia, like I said, I would check out Memoria Press, Time for Learning, um, the Gemini homeschooling system. Our, our program addresses the best type of learning. Right, like when your children do our, our year-long nature unit study, they are, they are creating maps of their property, studying geography, learning how to track north, east, south, and west, planting seeds, learning about photosynthesis, studying soil biology. By the way, doing this through hands-on activities, not just reading, right? They can learn this through hands-on activities. Like our children are making their own compost. They're making their own worm farms. They're making at-home fertilizer. They're making ladybug feeders. They are making bee baths. They are making candles out of wax. And if they want, they are being taught how to sell those candles on the Facebook Marketplace or Etsy. They are um, planting seeds, building greenhouses, constructing garden boxes, learning carpentry, um, all of this stuff that they're doing. This week, they are... I'm planting a bean in the mason jar, what we went over today, and then they're actually visualizing. They're watching with their eyes the process of a plant growing. So our, our curriculum is not only appropriate for children with dyslexia, it's literally appropriate for everyone. And if your child has dyslexia, this type of learning is more appropriate for their learning style than being like, oh no, you have dyslexia, I need your head in the book, I need your head in the book. Like that's frustration. And they should be doing that stuff. Like they should be learning to read and whatnot. But their primary style of learning should be to what they do. And project-based learning, in my opinion, is the best type of learning for everyone. Um, and then, of course, my courses, which um, are video, right? It's video of me going over propaganda, um, the Bill of Rights. That's all appropriate and very good for dyslexic um, children. So, yeah. 
Time for Learning is what we... Yeah, Time for Learning, um, Memoria Press, and Gemini. And there's also, I always forget the name of it, is the, um, the Center for Speech and Dyslexic Children, or... I'm not trying to put you behind a paywall. I just don't remember what it's called. I have it listed in Homeschools Connected. If someone could go in there, if they look in our special education area, um... Under dyslexia, I have the name of that center. If you could give her the name of that center, I'd appreciate it. Oh, you know what? I have another phone here. Why do I have so many phones? Let's just say I'm proactive. Here, here's... Here's Homeschools Connected. So you see we have a primary chat... And people are talking in there all day, just answering each other's questions. We have state groups. So you can connect with people in the state that you live. You got all this stuff. And then, so for special education... And then I have a topic, dyslexia. And then, okay, so the name of the program is, write this down. Oh, wait a second. It is the Multisensory Center for Dyslexia and Learning. The Multisensory Center for Dyslexia and Learning. And they, what they say is academic language therapy and one-on-one -on -one tutoring. The Multisensory Center for Dyslexia and Learning. And this lady had reached out to me at one point on Instagram. And turns out she's not a very good business person. But uh, <laughs> she reached out to me about um, promoting her center. And I was like, do you have an affiliate code? Because I was like, I like what you're doing. Um, do you have an affiliate code? And she didn't know what to do with that. And she never gave me one. But I still promote her stuff anyway because I try to give people good resources. But she should have gave me an affiliate code. I mean, in fact, I've still even made videos on TikTok, which sometimes they get hundreds of thousands of views, promoting her stuff without the affiliate code. And she doesn't even know I've done that. Um... But yeah, she sh definitely should have gave me the affiliate code. I don't know what she was thinking. I just, I'm not your average bear, so I still promote people's stuff. Like, if I see you doing something good in the world, I will promote your stuff. I believe in that. Like, that's, if you're making the world better, the world's a better place for my children. And I will support you. But yeah, you know, we got the propaganda class right there. You can see the propaganda class. Anyway, so that's the name of the center. I hope that helps. Oh, if you go to uh, classicallearner.com, you'll see it. Classicallearner.com. It's called Homeschools Connected. You'll see it. And just uh, use the discount code FREEDOM to join. So, all right, guys, I'm going to call it a day on that. I got a lot I have to do. Do you ever meet with parents in person? I really need to talk to someone and need some guidance. Um, I, 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 for the last few years, I've done one-on-one -on -one consultations in which I set up people's homeschools. Like I set up their entire homeschools and those were $300 a consultation. Um, I no longer accept them. I turn those away. I don't do them anymore. So what I tell people like you is you could literally join Homeschools Connected for $10 a month. And you have a 24-7 open chat with me in Homeschools Connected. Watch, I'll show you. You see those little notifications on the side? Those are our members that have inboxed me. And sometime in the next day or two, I will be able to get back to them. I just get a lot of inboxes. Um, and I'll get back to them and I'll answer their questions. Um, 
I've even been known to call people when they don't expect it, which I, I get a kick out of. <laughs> Hard with bear. Zoolander's Center for Children Who Can't Read Good. <laughs> and us. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, all right, yeah, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. Jesus. That was another assassin bug walking up on me. Sorry, buddy. I don't want to do that to you, but you guys scare me. Maybe it's your name or the big red stinger on your back, but stop walking up on me. That's two assassin bugs this stream. Get out of my gazebo. I didn't want to do that. I like you. I am sorry about that. I don't like killing things. Mm. Okay. Gives me the heebie-jeebies, man. They're coming for you. I mean, <laughs> they're CIA. <laughs> the CIA is coming for me with their assassin bugs. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, listen, in the moment, I'm terrified. Like, don't think that's me being tough. That's me, like, that thing was walking up on me. I'm like, it's going to kill me. All right. For the record, I capture bugs in my house, and I bring them back outside, but... Yeah, those assassin bugs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they're walking up on me over here. All right, guys. This has been fun, but I've literally got to run because the assassin, the CIA assassin bugs are coming for me. By the way, CIA, if you're out there, I just want you to know, I know I make a lot of videos pointing out things that you may have done that are bad. I got nothing but love for you, okay? All right? I'm a tax-paying American, and I actually support the CIA. Like, um, I don't know. Like, I just think we should hold people accountable, like, when they do bad stuff. Like, I wouldn't want Mossad and MI6 being the only ones running PSYOPs on us. That, that would be even worse. Get Mossad and MI6 running PSYOPs on America with nothing to fight them, right? Like, that's a problem. So, but anyway, I got to run. Been lots of fun. Assassin bugs. <laughs>